Is there school? Oh, I don't want to go to school. Five more minutes. Not you, Dad. Me. Okay. Get up. Huh? Get up. Time, up. For time, for time for school. Time for school. Time for school. Time for school. All right, I'm up. Boy, it's time boy, for boy, school. Boy. Whoa. Nemo. Hey there, welcome to Off Duty. I'm Wendy Bounds. The movie Finding Nemo, it debuted in 2003, and now Nemo, who looks something like this, is making a return to the big screen, this time in 3D. You want a sneak preview? I think it goes something like this. On this week's show, in honor of Nemo, we are taking you behind the scenes of a company that builds super high-end aquariums. You will not believe the digs these fish chill out in. Plus, I spoke with the actor who is the voice of Nemo, and he explains how he landed the role of clownfish and how it launched the next stage of his acting career as the son of a pot-dealing mom in the hit show, Weeds. But first, Finding Nemo won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature, and animated, that is one word to describe some of these folks who have created their own tributes to Nemo on YouTube. Clearly Nemo here is every man's fish, but what if he swam with the one percent? We are going to show you aquariums so luxurious they could spark their own Occupy movement. What can a clownfish get for a hundred grand? Watch and see. Forget the aquariums you grew up with. With the right amount of money and space, you can have your own underwater kingdom fit for a star like Nemo. We're here at City Aquarium in Brooklyn, New York, where the average custom tank costs somewhere between thirty-five and forty thousand dollars. A little bit later, we're going to show you one that costs almost double that. But first, we're going to meet the man behind the madness, the client who comes to you. Do they love fish, or do they just want a cool piece of art? It really depends. I mean, aquariums are luxury products, so a lot of the times when they're building that multi-million-dollar house, piece of real estate, you know, they need the fast car, they need the home theater system, they need the aquarium. You know. It's just it's part of it. Where do people typically put them? We do a lot of bathroom tanks, believe it or not. But we do everything in dining rooms to basements. We did a beautiful aquarium in the Time Warner building for Anna Anisimova. She's a Russian heiress. Tell us about some of the celebrity client aquariums that you build. A lot of baseball players, it seems like. We did David Wright, Jorge Posada, CC Zabathia. I just met Ice-T and Coco. There you go. And, um, <laughs> You've now reached the pinnacle of aquarium construction. In terms of what's inside the tank, do you just sort of design that yourself or does the customer get involved and they say, you know, I want a rock formation or I want a skull in my tank? It's a personality. Every client is different. Um, I know my animals quite well, so after interviewing them and asking them what their favorite color is and, you know, growing up, what was their favorite, favorite sea creatures or something that you liked, um, then we'll develop something called a fish portfolio. A fish portfolio. It's probably doing a lot better than some people's actual stock portfolios right now. The fish portfolio brings Absolutely. them more happiness. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, let's go check out the fish. What's the most popular type of fish people request for their aquarium mansions? Oh, it depends on the client. You know, I had one um, woman actually, believe it or not, who loved moray eels. And most women do not like morays because they look like snakes. It's very aggressive. Um, it's kind of like the pit bull. Of, of the fish world. It's got some big teeth, so you have to be quite careful. What's the most expensive fish you've ever sold? That would be a reef shark. You know, they generally go for six to $8,000, depending on the size. Now, I hear you've created a uh, Battlestar Galactica aquarium, is that right? Yeah, I was going through a little Battlestar Galactica phase, and, and um, I created this aquarium in Tribeca for a client, Alan Wilzig. Alan is a pretty wealthy financier. Uh, he's even starting a new reality TV show called Wilzig World. I think we should go check it out, do a little swim across the East River. Maybe we'll see Nemo. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> 
we made it. That's worth the trip. This is some tank. Let's talk about this aquarium. I mean, it really does look like it's floating in space. How big is this? How much water's in it? Tell us the vital statistics. The client really loves lighting and how it works within space. We actually have glass fiber optic underneath this aquarium. We can change the color fiber. It's to over 20, 20 colors that we can change it to. And we use all white fish. When the color of the fiber changes, we the, the fish change color with it. Now these are all koi in here? Yeah, these are all koi, and they're a special type of koi called platinum ogon uh, butterfly koi. Not bronze, not gold, but platinum. I'd expect nothing platinum. less from a $60,000 exactly. tank. Here goes the life changing right now. What's in the bottom here? What is this? They're uh, actually glass uh, blasting beads that you can blast paint off with. And you know, you can't show this to Nemo because he's going to be totally jealous. He's going to be very jealous. Very jealous. He's going to want this tank. <laughs> he's going to want in. That eel did not like us playing paparazzi. Now, you may know him as the kid from Weeds, but before Weeds, our next guest, he was, can you believe it, the voice of Nemo. His voice has changed, but can he still do a good Nemo imitation? Take a listen. Do you know where my dad is? Honey, your dad's probably back at the pet store. Pet store? Yeah, you know, like, uh, I'm from Bob's Fish Mart. Pet Palace. Fisherama. Ebay. Finding Nemo coming back to the big screen, this time larger than life in 3D. We've got Nemo himself here on Off Duty, a.k.a. Alexander Gould. His voice has probably changed a little bit since the film debuted in 2003, I would bet. Hey there, Alexander. Hey, how's it going? It's good. Now, you're 18 now, but you had just turned nine when Nemo first came out. How much do you remember about auditioning for that part? A, a bit. It was a really interesting audition process. You know, I... Um, I went in for the audition at first, and it was just like any other audition I had done. I was been acting since I was two years old, so I was used to it, and I um, I, I didn't think much of it. We went in, and I, I read some lines, and um, we left, and we didn't hear anything from it, and we actually didn't hear anything for about a year, and um, we got a call asking me to come in and record, and I still at that point wasn't really sure. Uh, who I was reading for and what character I was and we asked them and they told me I was the voice of Nemo and we were like wow that's cool and I think at that time we still had no clue how big of a movie it was really going to become. Your fondest memory of playing Nemo, do you have one? Fondest memory is probably just all the time I was able to spend at Pixar Animation Studios in San Francisco. It was a really incredibly fantastic place um, and I had a really really great time. Um, being there and you walk in and you know there's pinball tables and foosball tables and uh, pool pool tables and uh, scooters people running around on scooters everywhere and when I remember being a kid I just walked in and it was a huge playground and a huge place to have fun and play. Do people still ask you to do Nemo and if they do how, how do you do it? Do you just kind of like fake a high-pitched voice? Um, I have had people ask, in, you know, a few years ago I could try to fake a high-pitched voice. Now it doesn't work at all. Now I'm, I'm, my voice is so low. It's, uh, it, I, I can't do it at all. It just squeaks and cracks and, and sounds nothing like it. Well, you've, to so, you, you've uh, totally set me up here. I have to ask you to do it now. Give me a squeaky, cracky Nemo. Just, just one thing. Come on, you got to do it, Alexander. All right. Say, um, Daddy, help me. It's not even close. <laughs> but believable. Daddy, help me. Your dad's coming. Yeah. Your dad's on the way. And you have been, uh, you've played a very different role on Weeds. You've played sort of the murderous son of a pot deal dealer. The show's coming to an end. What's next for you? I had heard you maybe wanted to study philosophy, think about going to college. Yeah, you know, it's uh, some things are in the works with college. I'm not quite sure where I'm headed to yet. Um, but we'll, we'll see where life takes me. I, I, forward to continuing with the industry and going to college and um, being a kid but also working and um, we'll see what happens. Our producers have put together a little quiz here to test your memory of the movie. So uh, we're going to hope you'll play along. We just It started, goes from easy to hard. Do you remember the name of Nemo's father? Marlin. All right. One for one. What happened to Nemo that made his dad go searching for him? This is still pretty easy. Yeah, he got uh, captured by scuba divers. Ding, ding, ding. Two for two. All right, a little harder. Now, what was the name of the dentist's niece? Darla. Darla. All right. And what was so bad about her? What did she do to the other fish? She she killed the other fish. You know your movie. You know your Nemo. Who was Darla named yeah. after? A little trickier here. Uh, 
That might be tough. We Did we stump you? We stumped you. Darla, I believe, if my, the producers are right, is named after Pixar producer Darla K. Anderson. A little trivia. Okay. We taught Nemo something today. You're a very good sport, and uh, good luck with everything coming out with a 3D version of Nemo. We'll continue to follow your career after Weeds is done, whether you're in college, on the screen. Best of wishes to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's it for Off Duty this week. Finding Nemo in 3D at Hits Theaters next week. You got any plans? We could grab some sushi first. See you next week.